In this video, I'm going to show you how to pour the gel for the gel electrophoresis. So first you're gonna take the gel box and the comb, and you're gonna notice that the gel box has these little cutouts on the side, and the comb needs to fit down into those cutouts. And you might have to wiggle it and kind of finagle it a little bit, but you want it to fit down in there until it snaps in place. So notice how the comb is all the way clicked in place. And then notice that inside the gel box, there are these ridges and we are going to be melting the agarose and pouring it into the gel box. And we want the agarose to go into the area between the ridges, but not the area outside the ridges. So there are these little kind of wells outside the ridges. And so the agarose needs to go in the middle, in between the ridges, but not on the outside. So to melt the agarose, we're going to put it in the microwave and we want to loosen the cap, but not remove it completely. And the directions say to start by microwaving it for 30 seconds. I recommend actually doing 20 seconds because you don't want it to boil. And when I did it for 30 seconds, it started to boil pretty quickly. So I recommend putting it in for 20 seconds and then you're going to kind of swirl it around to make sure that it's fully melted. Now it'll look totally clear when it's melted. So if you see anything um, kind of cloudy, it means it's not totally melted. And make sure you use a towel or a uh, oven mitt so that you don't burn yourself in the process. Now, when you're pouring the agros into the gel box, I recommend that you touch the neck of the bottle to the side of the gel box because I tried to just pour it in there and I actually spilled it. So if you touch it to the edge, it'll make it work a little bit better. And here's a shot showing that the gel is in between those ridges and it's filling up that area in between the ridges, but it's not going to the, the areas outside the ridges. While you're waiting for the gel to set, you can prepare your samples. Now you'll notice that the samples, because of being you know, shipped around, the liquid is not all concentrated in the bottom. So you can actually fix this by tapping it on a hard surface a few times. And then you'll notice that all of the dye will kind of settle down to the bottom and it will make it easier for you to pipette it out in the, the next step. Now we're preparing kind of a makeshift pipetter by using a syringe, a pipette tip, and a coupler. So you'll see here that I have unwrapped the syringe and now I am pouring out the pipette tips from the bag. There's also a small little piece of kind of rubber tubing in the back and you're going to need to put this on the end of the syringe and it's gonna take a little bit of finagling because it's small, so you have to kind of force it on there. Now this plastic tubing or rubberized tubing is going to allow you to put the pipette tip on the bottom of the syringe in order to make a makeshift pipette. It will take your gel about 30 minutes to set. After it is set, you should gently remove the comb. And you'll notice that it will look kind of like a clear jello in the bottom of the, the gel container. Next, you wanna take the buffer and you wanna pour it over the gel. And you wanna make sure that the buffer goes into those wells on the end that did not have the gel inside them. And it should completely cover the gel and I uh, go a little bit over the gel, maybe by a couple of millimeters. So the buffer should completely cover the gel. And you'll notice here, I wasn't sure if I had enough buffer or too much in there. So I pulled out my ruler um, just to check and I actually had a little too much buffer in there. So I ended up pouring some of the buffer off and that's totally fine to do if you accidentally pour too much in there. But basically it should cover the gel and just have maybe a couple of millimeters above it. Now you'll notice that I put the gel box against a dark background because it helps me to see the wells better. 
Now this part can be tricky. You're going to use the pipette to pull out some of the dye and you want to deposit that dye in the well. Now you'll notice the amount of dye that I have in my tip. I actually discovered that that's a little bit too much because as you see, when I put it into the well, it's gonna overflow the well. And that's actually what you want to avoid doing. So I recommend pulling up less of the dye than what I did because you wanna fill the well, but not overflow it like I did with that first sample. Now you want to switch out tips in between samples. So you can just pull off the used tip and then put a clean one on before you pull up the dye for the next sample. Now when you're pulling up the dye, you wanna make sure you don't have any air bubbles in it because the air bubbles will make it harder to dispense it. And like I mentioned, pull up a little bit less than what I did, but you'll notice that most of my other samples went a little bit smoother and they filled up the well without actually overflowing. Now you might have to look at the gel from different angles and feel around with the pipette tip in order to be able to kind of feel and see where the well is because you want the dye to sit down in the well without overflowing kind of like what I just did with that other one. Here's a shot of what it should look like when you're looking at the end of the gel box. So you can see that the dyes are sitting in the wells. Next, you wanna get your nine volt batteries and it says to use three to five. If you use three batteries, it will take uh, maybe approximately three hours. If you use five batteries, it will reduce that time to about an hour. My gel actually ended up taking about 45 minutes but you don't wanna use more than five batteries. Now you'll notice that I've attached the batteries so that the positive and negative ends are connected to each other. And here I'm placing that carbon fiber paper that I cut up at the beginning of the, um, of the lab prep, and I'm placing it inside the box so that it is touching the buffer, but it's not touching the gel. So it's inside the box, touching the buffer, but not the gel. You will notice that I attached the black electrode to the side of the box with the wells and the red electrode to the opposite end of the box. And then I'm connecting the electrodes to the batteries following the instructions. So the black electrode connects to the negative terminal of the battery and the red electrode connect to the positive terminal of the other battery that's available. Electricity will be flowing through the gel and you should notice bubbles start to form on the carbon fiber paper. The directions say that it could take anywhere from an hour to three and a half hours for the dye to separate out. Mine actually only took about 45 minutes with the five batteries. So I recommend that you keep an eye on it and check it often because you wanna stop the electricity when the dyes are, well, when the, the farthest dye from the well is within maybe a centimeter of the end of the gel. You don't want the dyes to keep going because you don't want them to get pushed off the end of the gel. Once the dyes have separated out in the gel, make sure you take a picture of your gel right away because if you let it sit for a while, the gels will diffuse into the buffer and you won't be able to see your results. 